Welcome back everybody to part two of our Balloon Rider tutorial series. In the last episode, we set up our character so he can fly around. I hope you've enjoyed testing that out. Now, let's work on systems such as Game Over, which we will apply to our game manager. Once again, I'd like to remind you that this project is available to download so you can follow along in your own time if you don't have your own project. When you're all ready, let's crack on. So, game over. How's it going to work? If you select the camera, you'll see we have four colliders. The top three are to prevent the player from flying off screen. The bottom one, and if you open up the hierarchy, is our kill zone. If the player's feet collider touches the kill zone, we will trigger game over. When that happens, in our canvas, we have a game over screen, currently not active. We want it to be active. And we also want the ability to reset the game, which will put the player back into his default position on the platform so we can retry. So let's put that together in our game manager script. So go ahead and open it up. In the game manager script, the first variable we want is that of the player. So create a public player controller, simply called player, and we want its current position. So we'll have a vector free, which we will call player start position. When we have game over, we want the game over screen to appear. So underneath, create a public game object, game over screen. That's all we need to get things started. So in the start method now, let's set our player start position equal to the player.transform.local position relevant to the camera, for we are going to assign the player as a child to the camera, which I'll explain back in Unity. Then we will create a public void, which we will call game over. And inside, we want two things to happen. We want the player.gameObject.setActive false. We're not going to delete the object. We're only going to set it active, true or false. And the game over screen to appear. So the game over screen dot set active is true. Then in void reset, we want to do the opposite. So go ahead and put that code back in there this time. We want the player to reappear. So the player game object dot set active is true. And we want the game over screen to disappear. So the game over screen dot set active false, depending on what we select. So if we select reset, the game starts over. So we are now going to want to set the player's position back to its starting position. And to do that, just above player, we will say, that the player.transform.local position is going to be that of the player start position we assigned in the start method. So as soon as the game loads, where the player is, is going to be saved as its start position, that vector three. So go ahead, hit save, head back into Unity. Once everything's compiled, go ahead and drag the game manager script to the game manager object. And let's fill in the variable. So it's asking for the player controller. That, of course, is attached to the player. While we're at it, let's make the player a child of the main camera. This is because when the camera moves, it'll allow the player to smoothly keep up with it, as well as allowing us to move independently. This is why we use local scale for the position. It's position relative to the camera and not in world space. Then, Back in the game manager, let's also put in the game over screen in the canvas like so. Make sure that it's not active. And as it currently stands, our game over screen won't do anything if we press the buttons. So let's create a game over script, attach it to the game over screen parent game object and open it up. This game over script is really simple. We only need one variable. For now, the public game manager, the GM. When we select retry, we want to call upon that reset method from the game manager. So simply put the GM dot 
reset, just like so. Simple. And we'll also have the other option to quit the game. This one is already in built in Unity. We simply need to say application dot quit. There we go. And that's it. That's all we need for the game over. Save. Let's head back once again. The game over screen is now asking for that game manager object. So go ahead and drag it in there like so. Also, if you select the button, retry or quit, you will see it's asking for an on click event. In order to allow us to access the game managers methods, restart and quit, simply drag the game over screen with the script attached into the space there, where it says no function, click, and you'll see the game over script and our two functions, our two methods, retry and quit game. So go ahead and assign those where appropriate. So I'll drag game over down into quit function, game over and quit game. There we go. That's all ready. Now we need one more final step. And that is of course, how to make the feet collide with the kill zone. And for that, let's head into the kill zone script. Let's make sure we apply it to the kill zone game object and open it up. Just like the game over script, we only want one variable and that will be the public game manager, the GM. Then underneath, let's create a private void on trigger enter 2D, collider 2D, and we'll call it other. Then inside an if statement staying, if the other dot game object dot tag equals feet, then call upon the game over method from the game manager. That's all we need. So hit save. Once again, let's head back into Unity. Now, before we go ahead and test this first, let's put the game manager into the kill zone script like so. And because we're using tags, make sure we have the appropriate tags set up. So the player has a tag player, but we want to check the feet collider. Make sure it has the tag of feet. This is a custom tag to create your own custom tags. Simply click the drop down, select add tag, and you can create whatever tags you require. With that set up, now let's test. So I'm going to highlight the kill zone so we can see it. I'm going to hit play. And what you should now see when we leap off the platform, hit the kill zone player is no longer active game over screen appears and when we hit reset our player resets back to his default position on the platform ready to go again good now that's all set let's make the hazard look a little bit better by applying our water texture to it for that let's head to our materials folder and you will see we already have a material called sky this is an unlit transparent texture or shader that we have applied to this sky object here, which is a 3D object, a quad. If you go into the 3D view here, you can see it just like so. We're going to repeat this process, but for the water, rather than create a new 3D object quad, let's just copy Control D and duplicate the sky. Let's call it water and place it just underneath like so. And then let's position it in front of the player and the fish. I'm going to go on a Z value of seven and let's go ahead and create that new material to apply to it. So hit right click, create new material. Let's call it water, of course. And where it says standard in the shader, hit the drop down, select unlit transparent, just like so. Where it's asking for a texture, hit select and find our water sprite. There it is, just like so. Double click and let's go to the water quad and simply drag that material into the inspector. There we go. So because it's transparent, we can now see what's behind it. I think the water level is a little too high. So on the Y, I'm going to drop it down by minus 0 0.7. There we go. That looks okay. So 
that is our scene finally set up. It hides the fish and it will also cover the player when they fall into the kill zone. So let's go and see how that looks. Let's take off from the platform and splash. Good. Okay. Now, there's a reason we've applied these textures to two quads and not just put the sprites into the scene as a sprite. That is because we're going to animate them through parallax scrolling. So please do hang around for that video coming up soon in this series. Until then, I hope this was useful for you and that you're enjoying learning game dev. And I will see you very soon. Take care.